Hello everyone and welcome to our session on what's the news. Today we will be covering our dual region enhancement. In the next few minutes we'll talk about our latest dual region enhancements for cloud storage. You'll get an idea of a best fit for dual region. We'll also demonstrate this functionality at the end so stay tuned with us. I am Nishant Kohli, an outbound product manager for Google Cloud Storage and today joining me is Kumar. Kumar? Hi everyone, my name is Kumar Nachiketa and I am a storage practice lead for Asia Pacific at Google Cloud. Dishant, before we get into the details, I wanted us to get, set some context for our customers. My question to you is, what are the typical problems our customers face while planning for geo-redundancy for object storage and what solution goals we at Google Cloud have in mind to help our customers with such requirements? Sure, Kumar. Based on our experience of working with many of our customers, when they put their critical data on our object store, where they need it distributed across the geo for data protection or availability, there are three typical challenges that come to mind. Is the configuration setup itself too complicated? How do I manage for outages? Will there be complex runbooks to follow for failover and failback? Also, will there be any challenges in maintaining continuous access to the data in the event of a regional failure or te having temporary disruptions? And simply put, our goal is to ensure we resolve all of these customer challenges. We keep it simple and easy for customers to configure and let us manage the complexity at the back. Also, despite having a data spread across multiple locations, we wanna make sure it's truly distributed and maintained in a single namespace. So maintaining strong consistency is very, very critical for us, for our customers as well. Also in any unfortunate instance, disaster where region failures do happen, we wanted customers to seamlessly be able to fail over and fail back. So reducing the customer effort down to zero. Wow. So I'm, I'm sure this could bring a great peace of mind to our customers who are looking for geo redundancy in the object storage, right? So let's get into the details now. Help us understand the different location strategies with cloud storage. Sure. So when you create a bucket, you also have an ability to choose one of the location types of your bucket. There's three type of location types here. We have regional, dual region, or multi-region. Now starting with regional, your data is stored in a specific region of your choice. For example, Sao Paulo. Regional locations are particularly good for high analytical workloads. You can localize your compute and storage together into a single region. Now for multi-region, think of it as a large geographical area, such as United States. You can use multi-region when you want to serve content to data consumers that are outside of the sitting global, a Google network and distribute it across large geographical areas. Generally, you should think about storing your data in a location that is convenient or contains the majority of your users of your data. So for instance, for EU data, you might choose your bucket in EU. And for US data, you want to choose your data buckets in US. Now, lastly, for dual region is a specific pair of regions chosen by yourself. This could be an example, it could be Tokyo and Osaka. So you should choose a dual region when you want similar performance advantages as regional but also want a higher availability that comes from being geo-redundant. So uh, sounds like multi-region and dual region both are geo-redundant storage, right? Um, so can you help a bit more with specifics when to go for dual region over multi-region? Sure. So multi-region is great for customers who want to push data outside of the Google network. Use case like content serving comes to my mind. And when you're thinking about dual region, think customers looking for true active, active workloads, but also looking for, you know, serving high analytical type workloads. So in those are two scenarios, think about when content serving for multi-region and for high analytical workloads and providing true active, active uh, namespace for dual region. We know our focus is dual region enhancements today. Help us understand what those enhancements are and how can these further benefits benefit our customers. Sure. So, you know, we'll be talking about really two major enhancements here. Until now, we had fixed pair of dual region, for example, Tokyo and Osaka. Customers did not have the flexibility to pick their own region. Now, going forward, our first enhancements give that flexibility where customers can choose the region pair of their choice within the continent. So this helps customers choosing two regions which are relevant to their workloads and can take performance benefits through localizing their compute together with the storage. So in this case, in scenario might be Oregon and Virginia as the two region of your choice in the US region. The second enhancement really is around turbo replication. 
Customers, especially in regulatory industry, have tighter RPO requirements and RTO with dual region is always zero. And for RPO, for high demanding replication, customers now have a choice to choose premium data replication, which gives them a 15 minute SLA back RPO guarantee. Now with turbo replications, truly differentiating capability, ensuring 100% of your data is replicated within 15 minutes or less. This is globally unique and single namespace ability to select custom regions and also opt in for turbo replication can absolutely be handy for many of our enterprise customers. Kumar, so now that I have explained the enhancements, so typical scenarios, maybe let's deep dive into the dual region capabilities. Can you walk through the architecture and how can we achieve this functionality? Sure thing. So let's look at the dual region architecture and, and some of the secret sauce which works behind the scenes. Say we create a bucket and we choose two regions, um, say Singapore and Taiwan in Asia in this example. So when you create the bucket, despite having two regions in the back end, as an end user, you have just one bucket and you get one global endpoint to interact. So it's truly, um, it truly provides universal namespace. And Nishant, you have emphasized that a lot as well. So you don't need to worry about managing the replication at the back end. We take care of that. And you don't need to manage two buckets now. So this is a major, major advantage. Now, for, for end users, the data is strongly consistent. And for all the clients, read after write works just out of the box. I think it's it's pretty big deal for such massively distributed storage system. Let's see a few things behind the scene now. Uh, the way cloud storage handles metadata and data is different. So metadata is always synchronously replicated. So 100% of the time, metadata is same across both regions. Data, on the other hand, is asynchronously replicated. And Nishant, you already mentioned about our uh, recent announcement of turbo replication. So customers have two choices now, either to stick with default replication, which is designed to provide geo redundancy for 99.9% of newly written objects within a target of one hour. So newly written objects include uploads, rewrites, copies, and composition. And when you choose turbo replication, that is SLA backed with a guaranteed 15 minutes RPO. That is just amazing. Now let's understand a bit how read write operations works here so first of all for end users or applications read writes can be served from both the regions and that's why it's truly active active another major advantage let's look at write operations so as you can imagine for every new write metadata metadata is synchronously replicated across both the regions and data replication is based on the replication mode you selected uh, either default or turbo but it will be asynchronously replicated uh, with, with different target time. For read operation, let's say the client in the region Taiwan has requested to read an object. So metadata request will always go to the local region, which in this case is Taiwan. For the data, if it was written by a client in Taiwan, it's already there and it will be served by the local region and in this example, by Taiwan region. But what happens if the data was written by a client in Singapore and data is still to be replicated. So since the data is not yet replicated to Taiwan, the read for data requests will be redirected to Singapore region. But I want to re-emphasize that it is transparent to the client. And eventually, the data will be replicated to Taiwan, and it will be served from Taiwan for future requests. Again, these request handling is all happening in the back end. End user is making all the read write requests to the global endpoint of the bucket. So that was basically dual region architecture and, and how it functions still at the high level, I would say. Wow, that sounds amazing. And I think it would be great if you can get a quick demonstration of this capability as well for us to understand it better. Absolutely. Let's uh, straight get into the demo now. So this is a typical HA architecture with a load balancer to send traffic to a healthy backend instance in two regions. We will be simulating a portion of this architecture to showcase the functionality of dual region. We'll just focus on the compute layer and how it interacts with the dual region bucket. We'll use compute engine VMs in Singapore and Taiwan region. So I have already created one VM in each region. So I'll now create a dual region bucket across these two regions as well. So let me first create a bucket in the console. We'll go to cloud storage browser and click on create. 
let's call it dual region example asia and here's the location type and i'll select dual region for our demo this gives me choices to select continent and then two regions from the currently supported list Let's spend some time browsing through different options. Notice we have turbo replication feature option here as well. So if I select Americas as a continent, I could choose any of these pair of regions. Uh, for our demo, I'll select Asia Pacific as continent and I'll select Singapore and Taiwan as pair of dual region. Next, we need to choose a storage class. So for the purpose of the demo, I'll just go ahead and uh, choose standard. So we'll leave everything as default. Let's hit create and uh, the bucket is now ready. All right, so I'll now SSH in both the instance and perform some tests with dual region bucket. One thing worth mentioning, by pairing the VMs to the region of the bucket, we ensure that reading from the bucket is fast and has no egress charges. I'll be using a simple shell script here. It utilizes curl, so it takes bucket name, object name and where to write as inputs and then use the gcloud cli to get an authentication token the curl command has the s flag which puts it in silent mode and suppresses all the outputs so let me run this script in singapore vm first so when we invoke this to send the object content to standard out and as the object does not exist we see object not found message here so what I'm going to do is to invoke the command every half second from the watch utility and monitor for the output as we make changes. So next, let me write some text from Taiwan to a file hello.txt and uh, copy this file to the dual region bucket by using gcloud alpha storage CLI command. Um, so the copy is complete now. And as you can see, we can immediately read this file from Singapore VM. We are using the global endpoint. However, uh, the backend physical endpoint is different. And one way to see this is by running dig command for storage.googleapis.com. So you can see they are not routing through the same backend. Next, let's make some changes to the object and observe the behavior. So I'm going to modify hello.txt by adding more line. The old version, as you can see, is immediately updated due to the consistency of uh, dual region. And final test for us today is to illustrate the consistency and replication is bi-directional and it's truly active-active. Uh, let's, let's try to run these tests and this time we'll write from Singapore re region and we'll read from Taiwan region. So I'm just going to write a new file, hello.txt in this VM and then upload it to the bucket and immediately the file is updated with a new version and we can now read this from Taiwan as well. Amazing, super fast. And as you can see, the changes are immediately reflected at both the end. So you can imagine due to this property, even during a regional outage, the other available region will be able to serve the data as it always have full view of metadata. There will be minimum amount of data inaccessible as the data replication across region is asynchronous. Overall, you see how easy it is to configure the bucket and through one bucket and global endpoint, it's extremely painless for the application to work with object storage and any backend failure is managed transparently. So to wrap things up, here are some key takeaways. We have brought two enhancements, dual region selection where you can now have flexibility to choose two region pairs of your choice. Second enhancement, turbo replication, where you now have the choice to choose a premium data replication feature which gives 15 minutes SLA backed RPO guarantee. Turbo replication is truly differentiating capability, ensuring 100% of the data is replicated within 15 minutes. Next, I demonstrated how easy it is to configure a dual region bucket. It gives you a single global endpoint and it's strongly consistent and it offers seamless outage handling it's true active active in nature you have automated failover failback so it reduces your effort to zero from storage perspective thank you so much for your time and uh, see you again